Corner, presented by Jennifer. Warriors, Book One, Into the Wild, Chapter Six. Early morning sunlight streamed down onto the forest floor as Firepaw roamed in search of prey. Two moons had passed since he began his training. He felt at ease in the environment now. His senses had been awoken and educated in the ways of the woods. Firepaw paused to sniff the earth, and the cold blend and the cold blinded things that moved within. He caught scent of a two leg that had wandered into the wandered the forest recently. Now that green leaf was fully here, the leaves were thick on the branches, and tiny creatures were busy beneath the carpet of leaf mold. Firepaw made a lean, strong shape as he moved silently through the trees, all his senses alert for the scent, scent trail that would end in a swift kill. Today he had been sent on his first solo task. He was determined to do well, even if his task was only to bring back fresh kill for the clan. He headed for the stream that he had crossed on the first trek through the Thunder Clan hunting grounds. It gurgled and sputtered as it ran downhill over the smooth round pebbles. Firepaw paused briefly to lap at the cold, clear water then lifted his head to taste the air again for any scent of prey. The scent of a fox lay heavily in the air here. The smell was stale, so the fox must have drunk here earlier in the day. Firepaw recognized the odor. He had smelled it on his first visit to the forest. Since then, Lionheart had taught him it was fox scent, but apart from the glimpse of the fox fox. Of the fox's brush he had caught on that first outing, Firepaw had still never seen one properly. He struggled to screen out the fox stench and concentrate on prey scent. Suddenly his whiskers pricked as he homed in on the small blood on the warm blood beat of prey. A water vole busy about its nest. A moment later, he saw the vault. The fat brown body was darting back and forth along the bank as it gathered grass stalks. Firepaw's mouth watered in anticipation. His last meal had been many hours ago, but he dared not hunt for himself until the clan had been fed. He remembered the words repeated by Lionheart and Tiger Claw time and time again. The clan must be fed first. Dropping into a crouch, Firepaw began to stalk the little creature. His orange belly, belly fur brushed against the damp grass. He clucked closer, his eyes never leaving his prey. Almost there. Another moment and he would be near enough to spring. Suddenly there was a loud rustle, rustle in the ferns behind him. The water bull's ears twitched and it disappeared down the hole in the bank. Firepaw felt the hackles rise along his spine. Whatever had ruined his first good chance of catching prey would have to pay. He sniffed the air. He could tell it was a cat, but he realized with a jolt he couldn't identify which clan it belonged to. The stale stench of fox still confused his smell senses. A growl rose in his throat as he began to double back in a wide circle. He perked up his ears and opened his eyes wide, seeking out any movement. He heard the undergrowth ruff, rustle again. It was louder now. Off to one side, Firepaw edged closer. He could still, he could see the ferns moving, but the fronds still hid the enemy from view. A twig snapped with a sharp cracking noise. From the noise it's making, he must be big, Firepaw thought, preparing himself for a fierce battle. He leapt 
toward the trunk of an ash tree and climb swiftly and silently up to an overhanging branch. Below, he, below him, the invisible warrior came closer and closer. Still, Firepaw held his breath, judging his moment for, as the ferns were pushed aside and a large gray shape emerged. Rawr! The battle cry rumbled in Firepaw's throat. Claws unsheathed, he launched himself at the enemy and landed squarely on a set of furry, muscular shoulders. He dug in hard, gripping with thorn-sharp claws, ready to deal out a powerful warning bite. What, what was that? The body below him shot straight up in the air, carrying him with it. Uh, Graypaw? Firepaw recognized the astonished voice and ca caught his friend's familiar smile. But he was too fired up to loosen his grip. Ambush! Wow! Spat Gray Claw. Graypaw, not realizing that the cat gripping onto his back was Firepaw. He rolled over and over in an attempt to dislodge his attacker. Oof! Firepaw rolled with him, squished and flattened beneath the heavy body. It's me, Firepaw, he yelled as he struggled to pull free and sheath his claws. Rolling away, he sprang to his feet and gave himself a shake, which rippled all the way along his body to the end of his tail. Great Paw, it's me, he repeated. I thought you were an enemy warrior. Great Paw rose to his feet. He winced and shook himself. It felt like it, he grumbled, twisting his head around to lick his short shoulders. You raked me to shreds. Sorry, Firepaw mumbled. But what was I supposed to think? With you creeping up on me like that? Creeping up? Graypaw's eyes were round with indi in indignation. That was my best stealth crouch. Stealth? You still stalk like a lopsided badger, Firepaw teased. He flattened his ears playfully. Graypaw gave a hiss of delight. I'll show you lopsided. The two cats leapt at each other and began rolling over and over in a play fight. Graypaw swiped at Firepaw with a hefty paw and the young apprentice's head buzzed with stars. Oof. Firepaw shook his head to clear it and then launched the counterattack. He managed to get a couple of paw strikes before get in a couple of paw strikes before Graypaw overpowered him and held him down. Firepaw let his body go limp. You give up too easily, meowed Graypaw, loosening his grip. As he did so, Firepaw sprang to his feet, firing Graypaw off his back and into the undergrowth. Firepaw leapt after him and pinned him to the ground. Surprise is a warrior's greatest weapon, he cried, quoting one of Lionheart's favorite phrases. He jumped nimbly off of Graypaw and began to squirm around in the leaf litter, enjoying his easy victory and the warmth of the earth against his back. Graypaw seemed unbothered by his second defeat of the morning. It was too fine a day to be bad-tempered. So how are you getting on with your task? he asked. Firepaw sat up. I was doing just fine until you came along. I was about to catch a bull when your noisy trampling frightened it off. Oh, sorry, mewed Graypaw. Firepaw looked at his castfallen friend. That's okay. You didn't know, he purred. Anyway, he continued, you should be heading to meet the patrol on Wing Clan. Shouldn't you be heading to meet the patrol on Wing Clan border? I thought you had to give them a message from Blue Star. Yeah, but there's plenty of time. I was going to do a little hunting first. I'm starving. Me too. But I've got to hunt for the clan before I can hunt for myself. I bet Dustpawn's Sandpaw used to swallow a shrew or two when they were on hunting duty, snorted Graypaw. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But this is my first solo assignment. And you want to do it right. I know, Graypaw sighed. What is the message from Blue Star anyways? Firepaw asked, changing the subject. She wants the patrol to wait at the Great Sycamore until she joins them at Sun High. Seems that some Shadow Clan cats have been prowling around. Blue Star wants to check things out. You best get going then, Firepaw reminded him. The Wing Clan hunting grounds aren't too far from here. There's plenty of time, answered Graypaw confidently, and I suppose I should help you out after losing that bull. Doesn't matter, Firepaw mewed. I'll find another. It's a warm day. There should be quite a few out and about. True, but you still have to catch them. Graypaw nibbled at the front 
at a front cross, stripping off a piece of the outer sheath thoughtfully. You know, that could take you until way past sun high, maybe even until sunset. Firepaw nodded without enthusiasm without enthusiasm as his belly gave a rumble. He would probably have to make three or four hunting trips before he caught enough prey. Silverpelt would be in the sky before he got a chance to eat. Graypaw struck, stroked his whiskers. Come on, I'll help you get started. I owe you that at least. We should be able to catch a couple of wolves before I have to get going. Firepaw knew Graypaw followed Graypaw upstream, glad for the company and the help. The fox stench was still in the air, but suddenly it smelled stronger. Firepaw paused. Can you smell that? He asked. Graypaw stopped and sniffed the air too. Fox. Yeah, I smelled smelled it earlier. Doesn't it seem fr doesn't it smell fresher to you now though? Firepaw asked. Graypaw sniffed again, opening his mouth slightly. You're right, he murmured, lowering his voice. He swiveled his head to look up look across the stream at the bushes in the woods and beyond the woods beyond. Look, he whispered. Firepaw looked. He saw something red and thick haired moving amongst the bushes. It stepped into a clearing in the undergrowth, and Firepaw saw a low body glinting red in the dapple sunlight. Its tail was heavily furred and it had a long narrow snout. So that's a fox? Firepaw whispered. What an ugly muzzle. You can say that again, agreed Graypaw. I was following one of those when we first met, whispered Firepaw. More likely it was following you, you idiot, hissed Graypaw. Never trust a fox. Looks like a dog, behaves like a cat. We must warn the queens that one has strayed into our territory. Foxes are as bad as badgers when it comes to killing young kids. I'm just glad you didn't catch up with one when you, with the one you saw last time. He'd have made mouse meat out of a tiny scrap like you. Firepaw looked a little put out, but Graypaw added, You'd stand a better chance these days, though. Anyways, Blue Star will probably send a warrior patrol to scare it off. Put the queen's minds at rest. The fox had not noticed them, so the two apprentices continued along the stream. So, what does a badger look like? Firepaw asked as they prowled along, sniffing to either side. Black and white with short legs. You'll know one when you meet one. They're bad-tempered and lumbering animals. They're less likely to raid the nursery than a fox, but they have a vicious bite. How do you think old Halftail earned his name? He hadn't been able to climb a tree since a badger bit his tail off. Why not? Scared of falling. A cat needs his tail when, if he wants to land on his feet. It helps him spin in midair. Firepaw nodded in understanding. As Firepaw had predicted, hunting was good that day. Before long, Graypaw had pounced on a small mouse and Firepaw had caught a thrush. He quickly took its life. No time to practice killing techniques today. There were too many hungry mouths waiting back at the camp. Firepaw kicked earth over the prey so that it would be safe from predators until he came back for it. Suddenly, a squirrel broke cover. Firepaw burst into action. After it, he called, pelting at full stretch over the springy woodland floor with Graypaw on his, at his heels. They slid to a halt as the squirrel sc scampered up towards a birch. Lost it, Graypaw growled in disappointment. Panting, the two cats stopped to catch their breath. The S. <coughs> the acid stench that hit their mouths and noses surprised them. The thunder path, Firepaw mewed. I didn't realize we'd come so far. The two cats edged forward to peer out of the forest at the great dark path. It was the first time they had been here alone. The trail of noisy creatures growled along the hard surface, their deadly eyes staring straight ahead. Yuck! Graypaw snorted. Those monsters really stink. Firepaw twitched his ear in, agree in agreement. The choking smell made his throat sting. Have you ever been across the Thunderpath? He mewed. Graypaw shook his head. Firepaw took a step out of the cover of the forest. A border of oily grass lay between the trees and the Thunderpath. He crept slowly out onto it and then shrunk back as a stinking monster hurl hurled past. 
Hey, where are you going? Graypaw mewed. Firepaw didn't reply. He waited till there was no monster in, monsters in sight. Then he edged forward again, across the grass, right to the edge of the path. Cautiously, he reached out a paw to touch it. It felt warm, almost sticky, heated by the sun. He looked up, staring across the thunder path. Was that a pair of eyes glinting out at the forest on the other side? He sniffed the air, but smelled nothing except the stench of the great gray path. The eyes on the other side were still shining in the shadows. Then they blinked slowly. Firepaw was sure now. It was a Shadow Clan warrior, and it was staring straight at him. Firepaw! Graypaw's voice made Firepaw jump just as a huge monster, taller than a tree, roared past his nose. The wind from it almost toppled him over. Firepaw turned and ran as fast as he could back into the safety of the forest. You mouth spring fool, Graypaw, spat Graypaw. His whiskers trembled with fear and anger. What were you doing? I was just wondering what the thunder path felt like, Firepaw murmured. His whiskers were trembling too. Come on, hissed Graypaw eagerly. Let's get out of here. Firepaw followed Graypaw as he leapt away back into the forest. Once they were a safe distance from the thunder path, Graypaw stopped to catch his breath. Firepaw sat down and began licking his ruffled fur. I think I saw a Shadow Clan warrior, he mewed between licks. It was in the forest on the other side of the Thunder Clan of the Thunder Path. A Shadow Clan warrior? echoed Graypaw, his eyes wide. Really? I am pretty sure. Well, it's a good thing that monster came past when it did, reported Graypaw. Retorted Graypaw. Where there's one Shadow Clan warrior, there's more, and we're no match for them yet. We better get out of here. He looked up at the sun, which was directly overhead. I better get moving if I want to meet with that patrol on time. See you later. He sprang away into the undergrowth, calling as he went, You never know, Lionheart might just let me come and help you with hunting once I've delivered this message. Firepaw watched him go. He envied Graypaw, wishing he was he were off to join a warrior patrol. But at least he'd have something to tell Despawn Sampaw when he returned to the camp. Today he'd seen his first Shadow Clan warrior.